Well, it was really surreal uh, to, to be experiencing. And it was important to me in the book to really show that juxtaposition because I think for so many of us, you know, veterans, journalists, and others who'd been involved in Afghanistan over the two decades of the war, um, for those of us who had left the war, the fall of Kabul, you know, this collapse kind of created a vacuum, a vortex, it just sucked us right back in. So no matter what you were doing, no matter how far away you were from the war, you know, in a matter of days, it was as though you were living it as intensely as you had, you know, in my case, 10 years before. Um, and so, but I was living it through my phone um, because these evacuations, the coordination was all occurring over WhatsApp, Signal, all of these messaging apps um, with, you know, old networks of mine, um, whether they be journalists I work with now or, you know, old colleagues of mine from the military and CIA. You call it a modern-day crowdsourcing. You refer to it crowdsource Schindler's List. Uh, these communications, WhatsApp frantically trying to get people out, really boggles the mind, given that we're talking about the U.S. military and that it's come down to random moments of luck for people that happen to know someone there or know who to message. I mean, what does that tell you about the process itself and the organization that went in to leaving the country after 20 plus years? Well, there was frankly a lack of progress. Um, you know, no one who was involved in this, I meaning sort of the crowdsourced, you know, what people, some people call the digital Dunkirk, necessarily wanted to be involved in it. Like, I, you know, I'll speak for myself. If there had been a State Department email address or a phone number where as people were pinging me, asking for help, some of whom I knew, many of whom I didn't know, I don't even know how they got my number, and if I felt that there had been some point of contact who I could send these folks to and believe that their case was gonna be handled in good conscience, I certainly would have done so. But you couldn't, that didn't exist. What filled the vacuum, and it was sort of this pickup team of individuals doing everything from raising money for private chartered jets to, as you mentioned, building manifests and lists to some journalists who are on the ground in Kabul, hiring minibuses and creating these impromptu convoys to get folks from pickup points in the city to the airport to people like me who still had contacts in the government and military co trying to coordinate with the folks at the airport saying, hey, you know, this group of people is going to be coming to this gate at this time. Here's who they are. Please let them in. Um, so that impromptu effort was trying to fill a gap, and the gap existed because there wasn't a U.S. government process that had been put in place.